Hello YouTube chess lovers my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to the eighth part of the dirty chess tricks I'm continuing my coverage of the tricky repruta against the classical king pawn opening that is let's say after e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to c4 now in the last two lectures I have covered the move knight to f6 so those of you who haven't watched them I have highlighted here in the annotations in this lecture we are going to concentrate on the move bishop to c5 after this why should castle on the king side and the main move over here is knight to f6 apart from that there are other moves but they are pretty rare and that's why I have not included in this lecture after move knight to f6 black has a very simple idea black just want to castle on the king side and complete his development but here comes the big shot that is the move d4 boom this is a very strong gambit known as Italian Kotlovansky gambit which many strong players are not aware of it the good point from the white perspective is it contains lots of tricks that means you can finish up the black very very quickly can you believe the main move over here is bishop captures d4 and how many of your opponent knows this I bet not many because nobody just throw bishop pair just like that so to understand that we need to know what is wrong with the other moves the first move I want to consider is knight captures d4 after this why should capture the e5 pawn and there's a threat on f7 looming so accordingly black has two choices the first obvious looking move is castle after the castle why should continue with the move bishop to e3 so there are double hits on the knight and if the knight moves then the bishop drops so accordingly black has the only move left that is knight to e6 but after this following sequence will emerge white with a winning position here white continue with the move bishop captures e6 so bishop captures c5 is the next threat black response is force black has to capture this bishop but afterwards bishop captures f7 gives a check to the black king and doesn't matter if the black capture the bishop or move the king for example if the king moves then the bishop drop back to the b3 and now there are two threats which black cannot parry both of them so very obvious looking move is bishop to b6 afterwards knight check will nab the exchange just early in the opening so this is a wonderful trick exists in this line which many strong player has fallen into now the second move over here is d5 after the move d5 why should capture this pawn and if black foolishly capture the d pawn then c3 will nab a piece because if the knight moves then the knight on the d5 will drop so accordingly at this point black need to castle on the king side afterwards once again what can play this move bishop to e3 and this time around black doesn't have even knight to e6 so that means black has to try this wild looking move that is b5 but here white can go for this sequence that is bishop captures e3 bishop captures d4 queen captures d4 and b captures c4 and knight to c3 after the whole transaction you can easily say that not only white emerged with a couple of pawns up but black queen side pawns has been shattered in the next few moves white is going to eat that c pawn so all in all it's a winning position for white so by this analysis we can easily say that at this position knight captures d4 is not good the second move is bishop to b6 after bishop to b6 white will capture the e pawn and black has few choices if black takes the e pawn that is knight captures e4 then queen can go to the d5 square and we have a similar trick exists which I have shown in many videos so here white is threatening to mate black on f7 as well as capturing the knight and that's why black is going to lose a piece the second move is if knight goes to the g4 then white has this dazzling piece sacrifice that is bishop captures f7 boom number two very obvious is black has to accept this 
and after this we have this knight check which not only gain the piece but black needs to be very careful over here so for example in one game my opponent foolishly played the move king to g8 afterwards there is a checkmate in two it's a easy one right so just a queen check and after king to f8 queen to f7 is a checkmate don't expect this sort of things very often but let's say after king goes to somewhere else for example king to e8 then white can regain the piece and the following sequence which illustrate how good white position is so here in one game my opponent continue with the move knight captures e5 and after queen to g3 d6 not only white emerge with a clear pawn up but black has lost the castle right the third move at this point is e captures d4 but here white can continue with the move e5 and it looks like we are in some sort of similar position right yes it's a max lang attack position which i have covered in detail in the dirty chess trick 6 so it's a great way if you know the max lang then you can force your opponent to fall into via a different route for those of you who haven't seen this max lang attack here i have highlighted in the annotation so you can watch that video and learn what you should do after the move e5 so finally we come to the move bishop captures d4 after this what should certainly capture this bishop and there are two moves exist over here the main move is knight captures d4 which i am going to look at first after knight captures d4 white has two good replies if you know that your opponent is a aggressive player you can try some tricky stuff via the move bishop to g5 bishop to g5 more or less in white black to play the move h6 and then g5 but this is exactly white wants because now comes the third blow that is the move f4 boom number 3 here black has few options but all leads to disaster so let's see each by turn the first move is g captures h4 after this white can capture the e pawn and you can easily see that two of the black knights are hanging and the knight on f6 cannot even move because there are some nasties looming on the f7 so white will gain back the piece via big interest the second move is e captures f4 after this white can capture this knight and when the black recapture the piece now white can play the move rook captures f4 and there is a nasty pin on this diagonal that's why black cannot move the knight and white will emerge with a clear piece up the third move is knight captures e4 after this white can capture the e pawn which not only threaten this knight but there is also a nasty looming on the f7 so to parry both the threat black has the only choice that is knight to e6 but after this queen to f3 leads to the winning position for the white last but not least if g captures f4 then we have this move that is rook captures f4 boom number 4 very obvious is black has to accept this so e captures f4 afterwards queen captures d4 and black is in a very funny position right so there is a pin on this diagonal there is a pin on this diagonal and that means knight cannot move and that means black is going to be a piece down so those are some of the wonderful tricks exist if your opponent plays moves such as h6 and g5 the main line start with the move immediate f4 white wants to destroy the black center and start attacking black on the king side so accordingly black has to play the move d6 instead of d6 in one game my opponent try the move knight to c6 but this move miserably fail because of bishop captures f7 boom number 6 very obvious is king has to accept this and after this white can capture the e pawn 
not only regaining the peace but black king has been misplaced and in case if you are wondering hang on what happens if knight captures e5 then white can give this check and when the king moves then white can capture this piece yes material is balanced but white is in great attacking position as well as black king lost the castle right so it concludes that d6 is forced at this point after the move d6 white should capture the e pawn and when the black recapture now once again white can play the move bishop to g5 so it has a simple idea to double the black pawn and accordingly main move placed by the black over here is bishop to e6 so attacking the c4 bishop here white should defend that bishop with the move knight to a3 and now there are two moves has been tried in the first game my opponent tried the move queen to e7 so it has an idea to castle on the queen side so I immediately put break on the plan via the move c3 and after some thinking my opponent goes for bishop capture c4 so he's trying to do some tricky stuff but before he can execute something I played an intermediate move that is bishop captures f6 so black has to capture with the pawn and now I grab the bishop my opponent's idea was to play the move queen to c5 so there are some nasty looming with the discover check but here I simply capture this knight and very obvious is when the black recapture I have this idea that is rook to c1 black doesn't have any option left so black has to accept this pawns so my opponent grabbed the pawns and then I grabbed the c7 pawn and then he grabbed the b pawn which allow white to enter in the end game which is much better for the white so you can easily see that these rooks are not connected and both the rooks of the white are posted on the seventh rank so although there is a pawn down situation for white it's a winning position now in the game my opponent played the move rook to b8 and after I played the move king to f1 he played a suicidal move that is rook to f8 which allowed me to finish him instantly I'm a clear rook up at this point but instead of this even though let's say if he hasn't played the rook f8 move then the following sequence will illustrate how dangerous white attack is so here white can exchange the rook following engine moves can easily conclude that white has this winning position now instead of queen to e7 at this point in second game my opponent tried the move at six and that you are going to face more often here white should continue with the move bishop captures f6 and after g captures f6 white has this move that is c3 so once again dislodging the knight from the d4 square and when the knight moves then white can play this move queen to f3 so that means white is definitely going to regain the f6 pawn but also white can gain an important tempo via the move rook to d8 so understanding that my opponent plays over here queen to e7 so he just want to castle on the queen side if I allowed but here I capture the pawn which has a threat to capturing the rook so my opponent has to forcefully accept this queen trade and then he played the move king to e7 for a moment it looks like black is fine but after rook to f1 there are some long term problems for the black king so here white is threatening to capture the bishop and playing rook to f7 so my opponent captured the bishop and when white recaptured he defend the f7 pawn via the move rook a to f8 once again it doesn't look like white has a huge advantage but just one move and you will see how dangerous this position is for the black the move is knight to e3 boom number seven there are so many threats over here the first obvious threat is white can place the knight on d5 and then at least get the c7 or the f7 pawn the second obvious threat is white can capture this h6 pawn and then give this knight check which will regain the piece and the third obvious threat is knight to g4 which once again attack the h6 as well as pressurize the e4 pawn and all in all black cannot parry all these threats and white will emerge with a clearly winning endgame 
So, so far we have seen the wonderful tricks exist in knight to d4 line. Instead of knight to d4 at this point your opponent can also try the sideline stuff that is e captures d4 but once again there are some nasty tricks exist in this line. So you should see them. Here white should continue with the move e5 and black has two choices. If black foolishly take this pawn then the rook to e1 and black will lose a piece. So that is not possible. Accordingly the first move black can try is knight to e4. After this white should continue with the move queen to g4 which has a double hit to the knight as well as g7 pawn. I got this position in one game and here my opponent responded with the move d5. So I captured the g7 pawn and when the rook moves then I attack the rook one more time with the move bishop to h6. So that forced black to play the move queen to e7 but that will allow me to capture the d pawn and if you carefully look at this position white will emerge at least with an exchange of. Last but not least your opponent can also try to counter attack just like the max lang attack via the move d5 but here white can capture the knight and when black capture the bishop white can actually capture the g7 pawn. The idea is when the rook moves white can play the move queen to h5. Now queen to h5 is pinning the f7 pawn and accordingly black has to respond with the move queen to f6. There is no time to capturing the g7 pawn immediately. So for example if your opponent foolishly capture the g7 pawn then white has this move that is rook to even check and more or less this is a winning position. Four options exist if knight to e7 then bishop to g5 is exceptionally strong. If king to f8 then bishop to h6 and black will lose an exchange. If bishop to e6 then white can simply lop up this bishop because f7 pawn is spin and the most comical is king to d7 afterwards queen to d5 is actually a checkmate rather nice right so that is boom number 7 we can say so queen to f6 is forced at this position after queen to f6 white can harass this queen via the move bishop to g5 and when black capture the pawn then white once again can throw this check with the move rook to even now there are three moves has been tried in one quick game my opponent foolishly played the move king to f8 which allow me to gain the queen instantly after the move bishop to h6. In the second game my opponent tried the move bishop to e6 but now we can simply capture this bishop because the f7 pawn is pinned and when the king goes to the d7 white can actually grab the second piece via the move rook to c6. After b cross c6 I protected the weakest spot via the move queen to h3 so not only protecting the g2 but giving black a check so my opponent responded with the move king to d6 and here I played the move knight to d2. So it's very clear that white has a two piece against the rook but the main feature of this position is black king has been misplaced. Now in the game my opponent captured this bishop but this leads to the instant victory after knight to e4. But even though let's say if that doesn't happen if you check out this position with the engine it will say that it is clearly better for white. Last but not least a very strong player has played the move king to d7 but then I continue with the move queen to h3 check and after king to d6 I give queen to a3 check and when the king goes back to the d7 white has this amazing move that is h4. At first sight it looks like after the move h6 white lose a piece but white has a very cunning idea and that is the move queen to c5 boom number 8. White has a sneaky but a very solid threat that is queen to d5 and checkmate. So black doesn't have any time to capture the bishop. Accordingly in the game my opponent tried to defend the mate via the move queen to g6 
but after the queen to d5 check so my opponent blocked the check with the queen then I give queen captures f7 check so the rook is threatened so my opponent blocked the check with the knight then I just capture this knight with the bishop and now there's a threat of capturing the rook as well as capturing the queen so my opponent desperately go for queen to g6 hoping for the queen trade but no I just played the move queen to d5 check and after king to d8 there is a checkmate in 6 I'm not going to show here that's an exercise for you so you can do it by yourself so that's it I hope you enjoy this wonderful journey of the tricky Italian gambit line you should definitely try in your own game and you will be surprised how many of your opponent will fall very very quickly with this I conclude my tricky Repruta series and I like to say thank you for watching all of them and feel free to like and comment them. I will see you soon. Bye.